Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony, and today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We're gonna try some fish printing on a little red fin that I caught the other day. So I haven't done this before. If I make any mistakes or anything, you'll have to bear with me. It's all a learning experience for the both of us. So let's get into it. So I've got all my stuff that I need in front of me. Got some water, the ink, which is cuttlefish ink. I've got a cup to mix it in. Mixer, some pins to hold the fins. Some makeup pads for dabbing the paint. Obviously we've got our fish. Some spare paper and the printing paper. Oh, and a paintbrush, just in case. Let's get the fish out. So after I removed the fish guts, I washed all the slime off the body and stuffed the body cavity with paper towel, then wrapped it in paper towel and put it in the fridge until I was ready to use it. The paper towel's there to absorb any excess moisture that might ruin your print. I'm going to pin the fins down. So I think what I want to do is to pin the fins down into the position that I want them in and then using the hairdryer over there I'm going to dry it and after it's completely dry the fin should stay in place. Let's see if we can pin the whole body down first because I just tore some of the uh, tore some of the tail. This part here was really fiddly especially on a small fish just take your time to get the fins to sit just how you want them. It's like being in a science class. It's awesome. Okay. So there you go. The fish is all pinned down. So that's how the print will look. Hopefully, anyway. All right. So we'll grab the hairdryer. I assume we put it onto low setting and high fan. And let's dry the fish. And if you're wondering, no, it doesn't smell. All right. So I just gave that about a minute or two on low heat and it's all dry. So the fin should stay in place. Awesome, look at that. Beautiful, beautifully dried. So just like that. All right, let's try this ink mix. So I'm just mixing the ink with water. It's a cuttlefish ink that I got on eBay. It's not even open yet, let's, uh, let's see. Ooh, oh yeah. Smells cuttlefishy. So I don't think I need a lot. So I'll just put in, I don't know, I don't know about a little scoop. Also, if this gets on the kitchen bench, I'm pretty sure my wife will kill me. Wait, you, Stephanie. <laughs> so this is kind of like a paste. So I guess we want to thin it down to maybe a syrup. It's also quite chunky, which is not what we want. I'll tell you what, this ink smells fishier than the fish. All right, so I think that's kind of how we want it. Nice and black. Not too thick, not too thin. Let's give it a go. Basically what I'm doing here is just putting bits of paper underneath the fish so that any ink applied off the fish can be removed so you can make a clean print. Grab our makeup pads. Okay, let's try. So you wanna try and avoid getting the eye you get some of the eye, that's okay. Not a big deal. This is why the paper at the back's important, because if you get it onto the board that the fish is lying on and you print it, you'll get all this extra bits 
on your print, which you probably don't want. I'm gonna try and dab off the excess stuff, actually. Oh no. So if it gets too wet, almost rehydrated, it starts to fall back on itself. So we'll remove the blotting paper, let's call it. Now I've got my roll of printing paper here. Not a huge fish, don't need a huge piece. Here we go, here's the first test print. Get all the contours and stuff. Hey, that's pretty cool. That's the first test print. There you go. First test print there. That's not too bad. We can see that we're missing a bit of detail on the tail there. Maybe there was too much ink on the back fin. Just absorb some of that ink. So from here, we'll just make adjustments looking at the print we just made. But not every fish print will be perfect and not every fish print will be the same. Even from the same fish, each print will be different. Oh, Ooh. nearly spilled the ink all over the bench. Ah yes, the beautiful sounds of family life. All right, print number two, let's give it a go. All right, let's have a look. Wow, not bad. So there's plenty of detail on that, but maybe a little bit light in some places. So third time lucky, let's give it a go and see what we can come up with. Oops, so I totally went against everything I said and I've put ink all over the chopping board so that's not going to be a fun time. And yeah, the more I ink it, the wetter the fins get, the more they retract. So I think this might be the last print I do on this and we'll see what happens. Go. So I think this one shifted around a bit and it kind of looks like a flounder. <laughs> so a handy thing about using cuttlefish ink is that you can actually still eat the fish afterwards because it's food safe. I mean, they use this for dyeing pasta and stuff. It's got nutrition facts on the side, so you're all good. So I'm actually gonna turn this into a fish stick, which will be fun. <laughs> but yeah, I'll tidy all this up and then we'll, we'll cook this little boy up. All right, so let's try and take the fillets off this little guy. Okay, another fin down here. One side. A little bit of a mess because I am an amateur. There you go, two fillets. There's your fish frame. Whoa. Now let's see if I can get the skin off these. Beautiful fillet. What is the skin? Ooh, hoo, hoo. There you go, look at that. Goodness, it's like a, a chip. Now let's just take these pin bones out. 
All right, so this is an absolute feast. I am going to be well fed for days. There's your fillets. I'm gonna do some appropriately sized chips to accompany the fillets there. There you go, some chippies. We need the batter for the fish. So this is just a mixture of flour and salt. So flour mixture in the bowl. We're gonna do a beer batter. So obviously a beer batter needs beer. Look at that bottle opener, how appropriate. We're gonna add enough beer to give yourself almost the same consistency that we had for the fish printing ink. So it might seem a bit thin, but it'll give you the nicest, crispiest batter. There we go, it's not coming off like honey. It's even almost dripping off like water, but not quite, you can tell when you mix it still slightly thicker than water. Now you might be thinking, what do you do with a leftover beer? <laughs> We've just got our deep fryer set up, set to 180, so we can cook our chips first, and then add the battered fish in midway. Okay, so the oil's hot. Let's put the chippies in. So we fried off some of that initial moisture. Gonna take that out, let that cool for a bit. So there's our nice batter. Do our massive fillets. Straighten the fryer. Into the fryer, and now and put the chippies back in for a simulated double fry. Chippies! Also got a lemon here. Cause what goes better with fish and chips than lemon? There's an answer to that. The answer is tomato sauce. Now I got a question for you guys. Do you guys keep your tomato sauce in the fridge or the pantry? Let me know in the comments, because this will be interesting. Fridge is the right answer. And there we go. Pull that out, everything's nice, gold, brown, crispy. There you go, guys. Fish and chips with our little red fin that we caught. And our beautiful fish prints. So thank you for joining me in this little different style video. We'll see you in the next one.